Hi, everyone, and welcome to the great quarantine bake-off, back by popular demand, bigger and better than ever, with even more contestants, more costumes, and 24 pounds of flour straight from the internet. Okay, we're going to get going. I've gone to my favorite virtual bar. You can see it here. I'm knocking back a drink to hit on our theme of this week, bars. So I'm going telling my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight bakers, get started on your infamous bar recipes. As mentioned, we have contestants across the country, although kind of located in smaller pockets, working on their bars, many coming back for their second attempt at winning Star Baker. Our first Star Baker, Judy Williamson, is still in the competition, and, and we're going to have to reach out to her first. Judy, how do you feel coming back champion? I feel fantastic. And I feel like I needed to up my game. So I'm doing three different layers in oh. my book. Please tell us more about your whatever you call these things that you bake. Um, so my daughter unfortunately had her birthday during quarantine. Um, and we didn't really do much in terms of food. And she said next year because for watching the Great British Baking Show. She's like, next year, I want a tart for my birthday. And I want a chocolate and raspberry and then chocolate and then cream. And I was like, I can turn that into a bar. So that's what I'm making. I have a chocolate shortbread crust and then a raspberry jam that I'm gonna make and then chocolate ganache and then whipped cream on the top. Wow, Judy, as someone who's been sort of learning your style over the many, many times we've spent together, You've usually gone for a very simple recipe, very few ingredients. I know. This I, is exciting. Yes, big bonus points for stepping it up. Well, best of luck today. Thank you. Now, I'd like to reach out to one of our new contestants, a little back and forth. Let's reach out to Josie. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Welcome to the Great Quarantine Bake Off. Thank you. I don't want to forget where I am. I have to do another quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Oh, I like the... I like there the we go. Focus. As someone who survived our very careful and extensive vetting process, how does it feel to be on the live show? Well, uh, I'm a little intimidated. Uh, don't ever have use for 24 pounds of flour in this house, or nor do I have sourdough starter. So we'll see how I do. And as you've sort of been a fan of the show in the past, who do you find is your greatest competition? <laughs> um, well, I'm just going to have to go with the reigning champ. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what the Twitter world has been throwing out there as well this week. I keep hearing. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Now, as a special treat, we're going to go to one of two people in the same household. One, a returning contestant, uh, the other brand new to this event. Maybe we could do both of you at the same time. Or maybe not. Uh, how you doing? <laughs> yes, we have Donald and Michael. Hey, nice to see you again. How are you, Donald? How does it feel coming back for your second week? It feels pretty good. We went shopping, we were able to find everything. Tons of flour, tons of sugar, so we're feeling good. Okay. I don't it... waste the ingredients and Michael won't yell at me, which is good. Okay, okay. And, and how does it feel like a unified kitchen? Uh, do you feel the competitive juices bubbling up a little bit? Yes, it's never a unified kitchen here. <laughs> when, if I'm baking, no, Michael has to be in another room usually. So we never do this together. We, we are in a small apartment in downtown Minneapolis. So one table, one mixing bowl, one oven. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I feel like we need to create like a closet confessional booth for your house where you can go in and be like, this guy's driving me crazy. I love him, I do. But we don't bake together. <laughs> okay. And why don't we go all the way across, the, well, and actually I didn't even ask Josie or you, why, why don't you explain what you're baking? 
I'm making uh, the best bars in the world that Michael's mom makes. And I've been eating them for the past, what, 14, 15 years. And I have like six or seven of them each time that I go over to her house. They're peanut butter oatmeal bars. I don't know if they have a name, but there's an they're oatmeal base. Oh, see, they're called peanut butter fingers, as Michael has corrected me already. Um, and they are, they're like a secret grandma recipe. They're delicious. And I'm going to try to recreate them and we'll see how they turn out. Oh, and as someone who has, knows Michael's mom and had met, has met her, I, I'm a big fan. Have I also, ever, oh, go ahead. Have you ever had these? I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> it would have been a while ago. Maybe? Have you had it again? Yeah, I'm sure you have at some point. <laughs> <laughs> as, as someone hosting what I like to pretend is a reality show, I also can envision the drama of the, you stealing the recipe, the family recipe from your arch nemesis cooking competition. He might he not even discover it till he sees the final bars. Oh, the drama. <laughs> it will be, it'll be interesting. Well, uh, they're going to be not as good as his mom's, no matter what I do. I know that. That's what he'll say, but he'll still eat them. I also like that you're drinking out of what looks like a giant big gulp from Sonic. So some nice product placement as well. It's the Route 44 extra large drink from Sonic where we went tonight. <laughs> we go out to eat every single night and Sonic is the only place that we can have an, you know, what's kind of a real dining experience during this quarantine. Cause you, you're supposed to eat in your car. So it feels normal there. I love it. So I would say that is the first official commercial the Great Quarantine Bake Off has actually had. Sonic, as, as close to real eating in a restaurant as you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, please tell us about your first time on the show and what you're baking today. Okay, but well, I have to defend myself first. I am not as mean as everybody says I am. At least I don't like to think that I am. <laughs> I'm a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> that's not uh, what any reality show wants, by the way. I know, that's true. I, should, I, should, I don't want to be the mean one, though. Then I'll be pegged as that the whole time. Um, I'm making Grandma Francie's black and white bars. It's all about, like, the races coming together and unity and everything. And that's Donald's grandma, right? You're oh, just, that is. You secretly stole. It is not Donald's grandma. <laughs> It is my grandma for sure. But here, I have to say something about Grandma Francie. She ate a ton of bars in her life and cookies, and she lived to be 98 years old. So that's the secret to living long, is to eat a lot of bars. I love it. Well, good luck in your first Bake Off. Thank you. Um, Josie, why don't I quickly go back to you, and maybe you can quickly tell everyone what you're baking since I got caught up and forgot. Are you asking me? I have my mixture. Yes. Okay, I'm making blondies, and it's really simple. The I did prep a little beforehand. Last night I made these. Um, I made some caramel on the stove, and then I poured it out on parchment paper and let it harden. It's almost like a C's can candy. It's really really hard, and so I make the blondie batter, and then I place those sh caramel shards on top of it. So it sounded good. Here's a picture. Let's of what we're going for. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Love it. Here's my cookbook. What you can the Violet Bakery. That's what we're going for. Well, good luck today. Thanks. Okay, bakers. Let's play some music. Ding, ding, ding! We're shaking it up. Oh no! Is everyone ready for the challenge of the day? No. No. <laughs> to shake it up. I should turn the music down. To shake it up today. Each of you is going to add a secret ingredient, not a secret, a ingredient to your bars. So I want you to go into your fridge or cabinet and find an additional ingredient you're going to add. You can put it into the mix. You can put it on top at the end. I don't really want to ruin anything. The only key is when you do taste your bar at the end, you do need to taste it. You have to have that flavor come through. You could put it on at the, again, at the very end because I don't want to ruin anything. Or you could say, I see you, Pat, and I'm going to raise it and put it right into the mix now and make something brand new. Okay. Good luck, everyone.
let's continue with introductions. I'd like to jump all the way out to, we know her well, but it's kind of a new introduction to Peachy, also known as Deb Peachy from last time. And I am making lemon bars. I'm going with a classic. Classic lemon bar, very technical challenge. I just learned that term. <laughs> and it's going to be very tight for time because they have to blind bake first. You have to what? Blind bake. I have to bake the crust. And then while I'm do they bake while the I'm doing the lemon filling. Would that yeah, have been a good I challenge if I blindfolded you? Just press in, and I need to start on the lemon part pretty soon. But I can do two things at once. So you might be hard pressed for time if that was sort of a dramatic element in a reality baking show. This that could be your thing. The crust bakes for twenty minutes, and then the bars themselves bake for twenty five minutes. Okay. <laughs> and, and did you hear about the secret ingredient, the secret bonus shake it up thing? I did. I'm I'm thinking about what I'm going to do here. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck with that, and, and good luck to you. It does seem like a flurry over in that kitchen so far. <laughs> well, we're working on it anyway. Well, good luck to you. Yeah, hard to beat lemon. It's a classic. Okay. Now we're going to head over to Jane's kitchen. Jane also, it either looks like just he's hanging out or maybe closely supervised by the boss back there. I think he's knocking back a ham. <laughs> uh, PPR, I can't tell, rooting for his favorite team. Jane, no, what are you drinking? Um, it is caramel whiskey. Ah. Oh, stepping <laughs> it up, hitting the bar theme. I love it. Yes, and I'm making Guinness brownies. Oh, really stepping it up. Yes, in honor of him, so. <laughs> in honor of uh, in honor his of love Mark. of alcohol. Yes, that, in honor of That's all I know about you at this point. Yes, the theme tonight is alcohol, so these are Guinness brownies with Guinness frosting. Yes, yes. I assume there is much more to know about you, but I do only know <laughs> the alcohol part of it at this point. Yes, <laughs> yes obviously, there's a lot of alcohol. Okay. And Jane, Irish, that is all there is yes, Mark, Mark is Irish, so there's a lot of, <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's, that's, that's all that you need to yes. know. Okay, um, that, yeah, we've got it all. Yeah, we, we live over in Melbourne. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Florida. Yes. Florida. Florida. Okay. Florida. Yes. Florida. Yes. No, that took a little bit of spin yeah, out of we're, we're not a day ahead of you, so. That would have been something. So, Jane, how about your secret ingredient? It was walnuts. That was all I had. <laughs> Love it. This is going to work out great. Yeah. I could have put basil in there. I've got basil right here, but that would have been really good. It's all sorry. No, you not might never go back after trying these walnuts. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. I like well, walnuts in, bar in brownies, so I think it'll work. Excellent. Uh, and are you worried at all about time? You look no, mine are actually already, mine are already mixed. I had to reduce the Guinness ahead of time, so I did that ahead of time. I had to reduce it. Um, it took took a while to do that, so I, I pre-prepped that. <laughs> okay. Well, pour yourself a whiskey. You look like you're in good shape. Yep. Okay. So actually, mine's ready to go into the oven, so. <laughs> Excellent. Well, good luck to you tonight. But I also have to make frosting, so there is that. Uh, fair enough. Okay, best of luck. We'll check in in a little okay. bit. We're going to head off to Kate's Kitchen, who is not behaving very sloth-like. There's a lot of frantic... <laughs> Like things might be kind of far apart in your kitchen. You're getting a good, a good sort of. Yeah, it's a, it's a workout. Got to go over here and over there. <laughs> Excellent. Well, tell us a little bit about what you're cooking up today. Uh, I am also making a variation on lemon bars. I'm not a huge sweets fan, um, so I'm not really into the chocolate stuff or whatever. But I'm making rhubarb lemon curd bars with a shortbread crust. Oh. So uh, rather than just lemon, it's lemon and rhubarb. Yeah. So I've got the I've got the shortbread in the oven. Now I'm making the topic, the rhubarb part. <laughs> okay. And how about your secret ingredient? I sprinkled a little nutmeg on the shortbread because uh, that will complement the flavors nicely. Um, I may add something to this curd too. We'll see. I've got some toppings that I pre-prepared, but I figured since I pre-prepared those, they wouldn't count. <laughs> okay. And. And are you all concerned we're not going to be able to taste the nutmeg at the end of this? Uh, 
I mean, I'm, I'm mostly concerned that I won't be able to taste the bars because they're supposed to sit for a while, but we'll see what happens. I'll just gloop some out. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if we've built in cooling time. I mean, time is time. I, I'm kicking myself for not investing in a blast chiller before this quarantine. <laughs> oh, we had a good chat about a blast uh, chiller the last time on <laughs> the show. Yeah. Well, excellent. Good luck to you. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I think that's everyone except really uh, the founder of the Great Quarantine Bake Off, uh, competitor, coach, manager, contract writer. She's making baking great again. Yeah, well, uh, uh, all that good stuff. Let's go out to Debbie Kay's kitchen. Hi. How are you tonight? You've been I'm working great. pretty frantically too. So I am making also peanut butter, oatmeal, chocolate chip bars. Um, my secret ingredient that I'm going to change up a You're little. Like put in a few less. Um, so I got to tell you, the bar challenge was really hard for me because I don't normally make bars. They're not something that I make. So a week or two ago when we decided to do that, this is what it was going to do. I went through so many like Minnesota living magazines or Midwest living or whatever, looking for bar recipes. And I couldn't pick one. It was really not an easy thing to do. And this sounded like the best option to me. So that's what I'm doing, but I'm going to add butterscotch chips. Um, so I have, was going to just do chocolate chip, but now I'm going to do some butterscotch chips in there too. I don't have a bar pan, um, so I'm using a casserole dish that is not the right size. So it's going to have to bake longer, I think, than normally it would. So hopefully it doesn't burn on the top. It's good. This is a challenging one for me. Um, I'm using some strange peanut butter that I bought and had oil on the top, and I had to take it all out of the jar and mix it and put it all back in the jar. <laughs> this is just, this is, well, it'll be interesting to see if these are edible. Okay, that is the baseline for this competition. That's the bottom bar is edible. So if anyone wants to start setting goals, that's where you can start off at. Well, good luck, Debbie. Uh, I love that you're challenging yourself. I also love that your um, whatever you're making always has a very descriptive name that tells me exactly what's in it. <laughs> yes. I know Donald is feeling a little bit of direct rivalry here as – uh, PT and Kate were feeling. I love it. Well, what's funny, Debbie and I are, you know, from the same exact area of Philadelphia, and now we're making the exact same bars because neither one of us knew what bars were well, growing you up can't, in the Philadelphia area. I'd like to say that you can't live in Minnesota unless you have a bar pan. They actually, it's one of the questions on the tax, like you have to have a bar pan. And Probably I, and I don't bar. have a bar pan. I don't know that I'll be investing in one, so I may have to not ever move to Minnesota. But I've seen the snow picture, so maybe that's not yeah, a bad thing. Even in Minnesota with the, the snow and ice. You, right. you don't want the weather here, I don't think. But you can come to Sonic with us anytime you want. Come up here. I look forward <laughs> to that. You have you Wawa. Know, you do have the mall, though. I've never been to that mall that's, you know, supposed to that's be incredible. And I do enjoy a good mall. Hey, it is a great mall. We do have a question coming in from our audience. They'd like to know, and this is open to anyone, if uh, they're curious if edibles are also being made during this bar process. <laughs> what was that? Repeat that, please. If edibles are either a secret ingredient, which I thought maybe someone might jump on, or just maybe were pre-consumed, uh, we do not partake in drug testing yet. Uh, so if you feel like you need performance-enhancing substances that's okay or maybe now you're just making them into edibles so, i didn't know the tenor of this crowd i seriously thought about it but i was like i don't know these people <laughs> All <laughs> <you're recording>. <laughs> uh, being an addiction psychiatrist pat i'm not sure if that's what i should be doing yeah the audience is unknown since this is floating out on the internet so yes <laughs> well what well, what we're hearing from Twitch is we actually have people on Twitch watching because they have the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong show to watch. <laughs> Big props to Tactical Hat and Melissa for keeping this quite entertaining on, on all sides. Yeah, 420 was yesterday. 
Um, I also wanted to note that Josie in this mix had showed her pan. It looked beautiful and poured herself some Maker's Mark. So she's, she's right up there with the Irish, just trying to keep, her, <laughs> keep pace. I think she's trying to keep up with both of you too, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure if um, my dough is supposed to be like a brick or not, but this is the entirety um, of my bar dough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just throw that hunk in the oven and it comes out a big flat square bar. <laughs> we'll see. That's bar science. <laughs> Kate, what, walk us through what you're doing, and feel free to embellish. I'm zesting a lemon. Uh, there's going to be some lemon zest. Uh, I also added some lemon zest to the crust. Regardless, that wasn't part of the recipe, but I put lemon zest in everything because it uh, just adds a little, you know, fun zest. That's <laughs> yeah, that so seems like something. Some, it's a microplane. Yeah. Zest. Get your little pile of zest. Hmm. <laughs> What else would you use that tool for? You could grate cheese finely. Um, you could probably use it to remove calluses off your feet, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> and then you would want to wash it pretty thoroughly? Yeah, especially if there was blood. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, you can use it to grate nutmeg. I use free ground nutmeg because I don't have nutmeg pods. That's a little beyond my choices today. I didn't even know a nutmeg came in. Pods. Yeah, it comes in a little, a little nut. nut bag. <laughs> okay. I think yeah, you're whipping a lot of things friend, out over there. Yeah, every time I try to grate nutmeg, though, I get my knuckles. So the whole blood <laughs> part of it. Yeah, they're kind of small. Actually, yeah, you should. They make a smaller one that you wouldn't because it's yeah. harder, so you dull your thing if you use stuff like that. Yeah. You all might wish you had one when we do our zombie special blood ingredient episode. Oh, man. <laughs> I got a lot of other things I could accidentally hurt myself in the kitchen. All right, so I'll try to do this. Judy, how's it look over there, our returning champion? So it's so far. Shortbread's in the oven. I made the jam. Now I just need to wait for it to come out. Did you want to hold it this? You're going to be and put it on. And put it on on me, okay? For all, I know all of you probably many, many times uh, watched the first season, if you will, of The Great Quarantine Bake Off, but Judy, in our last one, needed about eight cumulative total minutes to finish hers. <laughs> Basically, cleaned her whole kitchen, and I think I heard the vacuum and maybe some laundry get done while drinking numerous beers, and then she won. <laughs> Only one beer this time, so. Yeah. This week, and she's she doing it with a broken apron. oven. Yeah, she put on an apron and a do rag to make it seem like she was working. This is because I need a haircut, and everywhere's closed. <laughs> that that might be one of the week's challenges. In the middle, somebody will cut your hair. <laughs> Not as a secret ingredient, though. Oh no. Um, peachy. I haven't yeah. seen you on your screen in like 20 minutes. Are you okay? Well, I, I'm not really liking the way my crust is looking, but it's looking okay time-wise. I was just worried about getting that in as fast as I could to get it baked first. Okay. You're feeling all right, though? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think I figured out my secret ingredient. It's going to be blackberries. Wow. That was kind of a fun thing to have. <laughs> Well, my first thought was blueberry because blueberry and lemon is an excellent combination. Okay. I don't see any blueberries in the house, so we're going with blackberries. <laughs> I can't wait to, I was going to say try, but I can't wait to hear your description of you trying it and imagine what it tastes like. Well, it's going to be interesting because they're actually frozen. Color. Oh. <laughs> You're going to need even more time. What a, what a bold choice to make. I'm, I'm hoping the fact that they're frozen will stop them from bleeding too much into the lemon. Oh, seems like a tactical baking strategy. I, also, I actually also went for a second secret ingredient, pecans. Did you say love? Pecans. Pecans. I thought you said your second ingredient was love. That would be a pretty sweet one. I'd love to see what that tastes like. Hard to go wrong with pecans, so. 
I'm guessing mom tastes like cinnamon. I don't know. Oh, Josie has also whipped up an entire Chinese meal during this process. <laughs> Is that Chipotle? Yeah. Chipotle. I was just telling you, it actually love tastes like Chipotle. Oh, okay. And Josie, I forgot. Did you tell me your secret ingredient already? Well, it was the caramel shards that I made last night. I make the caramel, lay it out, and break it. Like, it actually might have cut my finger. It's really sharp, really hard. Okay. It's not queso or anything. <laughs> we'll try the guac later. Okay. And Donald and Michael, did I ask you guys about your secret ingredient? Yeah. Um, I just put some peanut butter and powdered sugar together and made a little frosting, and I put, I'm going to put that on the top, very top of all the layers. Wow. So it's ever for five minutes. That sounds whipped up. I love it. Okay, five minutes, and we're starting now. Oh, my secret ingredient is Dunkin' Donuts coffee because I have some and it's in the fridge and it goes well with chocolate. You can't go wrong with a little bit of coffee and chocolate. Oh, no, never. Product placement. <laughs> yeah, and our second commercial, Dunkin' Donuts. You can't go wrong with coffee and chocolate. Mm, I don't remember getting, getting the, the product placement check. Did you get that, Don? Uh, <laughs> Debbie, yeah. Don't worry about the finances. Just keep baking. <laughs> Uh, who, Judy, did I get your secret ingredient? And then was that everyone? Um, I did not. Yeah, funny. Um, it is almonds. I decided to put some almonds in my chocolate ganache. I love it. I love it. I can feel it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, yeah, it sounds like our audience uh, has voted in and they are in for the zombie special blood edition. So if we can keep this rolling for, if I do quick math, I think it'd be like 24 more episodes, weekly episodes, or to get to Halloween, 12 bi-weekly, uh, that would be good. And yeah, it's mostly blood comments now. <laughs> if you're looking to win, I think an intentional or accidental cut of some sort could garner you a lot of sympathy. Oh, yeah. Nothing great Anyone who's doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or I think if you like violently ran into a cabinet or something, uh, I think that would probably get you a lot of points. I have, I have my shelves that I could run into. <laughs> yep. Yep. That toaster oven looks like it could easily fall in the sink and electrocute yeah. somebody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of knives. I'm being shown a lot of knives all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> Quite wonderful. <laughs> My topping I used a microplane to make, and this thing will cut the hell out of you. Yeah. <laughs> this, this Twitch feed is awesome, too. They are, they are cheering on the Blackberry Curveball. Uh, and, Deb, I'm not going to lie. You're a very mysterious character. You're very dark on your screen. You're not in the picture a lot. You look like you might be in, like, a, a witness baking relocation program. Uh, I love it. I absolutely love it. It looks like Kate is unwrapping maybe a folded up bike tire. I'm not sure what she's doing. I'm rewinding my immersion blender that I use. Ah, yes. To puree my uh, rhubarb. Ooh, sound, sounds dangerous. No, it's got the other parts over here. Yeah, the part with blades. <laughs> so I went ahead and made my frosting. Oh, let me take a look here. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually a Guinness frosting. Oh, yum. Yes. Could you, like, do a dramatic dip of your finger in there and taste it in a very, yeah, yeah, it's real satisfying <laughs> response. Well, I just dropped it on my computer. <laughs> this is like, I need a com something for the commercial leading up to the show. It is really good, though. Perfect. It's, um, it's just butter and confectioner sugar and about four teaspoons of reduced, gu or reduced Guinness. Oh, how long did you reduce the Guinness? Um, 30 minutes. 30 minutes? And how much was it? I reduced it from a um, regular 12 ounce. Um, from a 12 ounce. Oh, cool. Two thirds of a cup. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And I used a half a cup in the batter and then two or three tablespoons in the um, frosting. 
Okay. I make I make a lot of cakes and stuff with Guinness for Mark's birthday. I always make him a Guinness cake. Yum. So Jane, I forgot what's under the Guinness frosting. Um, a Guinness brownie. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. it's, it's a brownie made with um, dark chocolate chips and um, just plain brownie stuff. <laughs> dark chocolate chips, um, sugar, and just, you know, regular brownie. But a lot with Guinness, with reduced Guinness in it, so. More from our, our live Twitch feed, which frankly has made this like a hundred, like four times better, I'll say. Um, <laughs> They think that when we were defining what love is, Twitch believes a love tastes like Reese's, like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Mm. I would have trouble arguing with that as well. And again, probably a way to garner, garner votes. Um, Donald is taking me on a, an Egyptian gingerbread tour. I, I guess it's Michael, actually. Michael makes a gingerbread display for oh, every wow. holiday. So since we wanted to move this year along to like Halloween, to end 2020 early, he made a Halloween gingerbread display. This is the, the Giza area of, it's all edible. The pyramids from Giza, the Sphinx, and the obelisk. Wow. That was awesome. Wow. Wow. He, I love it. The place smells like gingerbread. It's wonderful. He does it for Halloween. He does it for Christmas. And it takes up all of our table space, but it's fantastic. Is it edible? Oh yeah. Everything's edible. <laughs> and Donald, if I heard you correctly, you said Michael just made that in the last 10 minutes for this competition, right? <laughs> Isn't he amazing? He's so talented. Yeah, I can't wait to see your bars, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. A lot of talent out there. Uh, we also have heard that Twitch would say, and actually talking about financing the show, they would pay money to see somebody run into a cabinet full speed. How much money? <laughs> Let's see what they say. I guess you can look up on. Oh. Deb is all, Deb, uh, Peachy has also stepped up her game by turning on a light. <laughs> yeah, hello. It helps to turn on the light. Right? There you are. Oh, turned on the little one over the sink that I never thought about turning on the overhead because it wasn't dark when I started. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as cabinets, we need my sister. She's five two. She's just right <laughs> to walk into the cabinets. <laughs> that would be maximum head wound damage. Yes, that's what we're looking for. Debbie, Beth wants to know what the Twitch feed is. Me, Debbie? No, my. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, or whoever's whoever's handling it. Melissa's probably screaming right now. It's twitch.tv forward slash tactical hat. Forward slash tactical hat. Yep. Okay. I ask, what is Twitch? I don't know, but my daughter knows what it is. Maybe, maybe is she. Oh, she's not there. She's in Kentucky, right? She's in Kentucky. Okay. okay maybe she could join us. Twitch. Uh, somebody I think young knows the answer, but it it's uh, it was I think originally created to stream video games, so mm -hmm. people playing games and people could watch, and and there's channels where you can subscribe and and then pay, uh, and people yeah. can get paid. It's expanded a little bit. I know there's a lot of DJing out there now, and honestly, anything you want to kind of stream such as a Zoomed quarantine baking show. A lot of academics are using it now for teaching their classes. Yeah. <laughs> not me, but I'm not, I'm not that newfangled. I use Zoom to teach a lot. Yeah. I'm pretty... uh, this is the first time I've used Zoom was for this quarantine bake-off with, uh, with you guys. So. Wow. No, I mean with my students in Zoom all the time, even before this. It's pretty cool. It works really well. Yeah. Yeah, I teach a project management class, and I used it for that. I do like, I'm seeing a lot of people, uh, Jane, as we knew, was going to. I see Debbie Kay. I think you had a glass of wine up there. Everyone, for as stressed as you are, you look very relaxed up there. I say up there because you're on the top part of my Zoom. So <laughs> maybe, maybe our Twitch people can tell us if we do this again in a couple weeks. Um, 
last episode, we had the same thing. Everybody kind of got their stuff in the oven early. There are some people still working, but mine's in the oven. I'm just waiting. I think yeah. a couple of people are in the same situation. Maybe some ideas on making it a little harder next time. How about that blind baking thing Deb was, Peachy was talking about? How about, how about you have to tell somebody else how to do it? <laughs> Wouldn't that be horrible? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already worried about Donald and Michael doing that version. I don't know. They're on mute. They may be fighting it out right now. <laughs> uh, Judy, again, is in full kitchen cleaning mood, I, mode. I guess it still wasn't hard enough for her. I mean, maybe no pre-prep. I still have to, I still have my ganache, like it's cooking. I just, well, yeah, I have, right now. I have doubled down on the butterscotch and I made a drizzle for when it comes out of the oven, but it's done, so. All right. Well, we could do something like a, like Michael was saying, maybe two 20 minute segments, a 20 minute segment where you're doing the initial yeah. Bake. An hour later, we do the other, or two hours later, even we do the next 20 minutes, like, finishing decorating and the tasting and the, the judging. So like two 20-minute segments um, instead of a, an hour with the downtime. Because we always have this downtime in between of 20, 25 minutes. So that may be an option. Donald, how about we do it like three weeks apart so we all have super long hair in the next segment and full grown beards and maybe probably some of us are still a little tipsy from the three weeks of drinking, whatever. Hair for me. He only or made we, in the back. That's it. Not too bad. We could add a decoration component to where it, we are still not done when it comes out. I like the decoration component because I don't know anything about that, but Michael's really good at that. So I'm decorating mine today but so you've got a little bit out of it <laughs> yeah the only problem with that is like i was i was going to cook a batch before this because if i'm going to frost it it has to be cool so yeah mine won't be really ready to cut but yeah. i can gingerly set some things atop it <laughs> so for the next challenge twitch is voting and, and there's only a one word description pizza <laughs> <laughs> we could do that yeah, I mean, I could make pizza dough. Yeah. We could do that. I'd be up for pizza. Like dessert pizza? Or just pizza pizza? Pizza. I make dessert pizza. pizza. Or actually, maybe just whatever you want. Whatever you, kind of pizza you want. Whatever you want. Cauliflower crust? Like a... Whatever kind of... Whatever pizza means to you. I think mostly it is just the munchies kicking in. I think if you could somehow make like Cheetos or Doritos, they'd go for that too. <laughs> the pizza I ordered from Pizza Luce yesterday was in honor of 420, and it had Fritos on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something from Twitch that says, I don't know who it's for, but it says, Hi, Mom. Tell them about the first time you made Irish car bomb cake when I was in high school and what I, what I came home to. There was actually a question. Yeah, that would be my daughter. So I made, an, I made an Irish car bomb cake, which is a very heavy Guinness cake, but it's also got Irish whiskey in the ganache. And it's got an, a, a, a Bailey's ice cream frosting. And I tasted it the whole way through. And when my daughter got home, I was so drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I called someone and I was, I was just totally wasted. And Beth is scarred for life, apparently, too. Oh, totally. <laughs> I feel like I wanted to sort of suggest what if we did the great quarantine bake-off drinking game, but I'm also pretty sure I know who would win it. It wasn't, it wouldn't be me. I'm, I'm a lightweight. Mm, well, maybe your husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is, the, somebody asked what they'd like to see what the rhubarb looks like, Kate. The rhubarb itself? I don't know. Probably-ish, maybe? <laughs> I had to go to a second store to do this, which kind of breaks my uh, social distance quarantining rules, but they did not have it at the co-op, mm. um, which is weird because my parents live in Illinois and they said they already have tons of harvestable rhubarb versus those stuff that grows in my yard is only that, that nubbin going in so far. But as far south as six hours below us, there's full stock rhubarb. Normally there's a big leaf on top. Lovely. <laughs> And thanks for risking it for the show. 
<laughs> I love rhubarb. I'll cook it in anything. Okay. So I think it's also a Minnesota thing. Kate, you're not in Florida then, are you? No, I'm in Minnesota. <laughs> I, miss, I miss rhubarb so much. I'm from Maine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I, I bought this house last year and I was like, oh, sick, rhubarb's in the yard. <laughs> what part of Maine? Um, I was born in Portland. Okay. I lived up in the county for a while. Oh, okay. A Rostock then. Yep. It's like everyone knows where that is. <laughs> <laughs> My uncle used to call that God's country. It is. I did get a little tired of winter, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's how I ended up in Florida. <laughs> I'm in Ohio parents, now. My parents got tired of it. <laughs> There is. I like Portland. Portland's a fun city. Yeah. There are a lot of props for Drunk Jane as well as the rhubarb stock. So thank you for that whole segue and segment. <laughs> there is also a call for shots. Um, clearly, nobody should do anything they don't want to do, but I do think it's going to garner you favor. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, I hope you're walking to like pull up a floorboard to pull out like a secret bottle of booze that you've hidden from everyone. Oh, I got my whole liquor cabinet. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty impressive as well. I think that's probably going to also get you some props. Move the Bloody Mary mix. <laughs> so I can smell the peanut butter this time. Good. A plus. So I have the good yeah. stuff. Actually, smelling what you're baking, Debbie, I think is going to be a key yeah. part of the flavor. Yeah. Uh, I am kind of bummed. Your mom is here, but she's not turning her camera on. It was sort of a warming smile. She continued for a full 60 minutes last time. <laughs> well, turn on your camera, Mom. Everybody can see. Like, <laughs> I probably teased a little too much, too. I'll be nicer this time. Awesome. Is anybody, oh, I was just going to say, is anybody out of the oven? I'm checking. Five more minutes. <laughs> 18 here. Hey, and Mike and I are out of the oven at the exact same time, Pat. So oh. we're in the oven together peacefully. It worked. I, so I'm, this could be, we can adjust because that's the magic of, not doing anything for real, but, and I forgot to announce it. We actually have 13 minutes left. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> how, many, how many minutes do people need at the bare minimum? Okay, okay. There's, more time left. <laughs> There's 12 minutes and 59 seconds to go. <laughs> Guys, hear that? My timer says there's 12 minutes and 59 seconds to go. <laughs> I feel like you thought Siri was, her voice was too feminine and you reprogrammed it. It's, it's Google and I like the dude better than the lady. <laughs> so Jane, you need 15 minutes? Uh, well, I have 13. I, they'll come out of the oven and I'll decorate them and I, I don't think I'll be able to cut much into them anyway, so. Okay, yeah, so I let's, I can more or less work with this timeline. <laughs> Who needs, who needs what time? Who needs the most time? Is, is 12 minutes enough time for folks? Or would you yep. like a little more? Which is fine. It's enough for me. Jane, I'm looking at you. Um, I won't be able to frost it. I can slap a little bit of frosting on a corner. <laughs> you had like 15 minutes? Would that be enough? I have no idea. Yeah, that's good for you and me, because I can... Yeah. Okay, bakers, warning, attention, only 15 minutes left. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and did somebody, did I hear a plate shatter? Yeah. Oh, no, you're going to have to start that whole, what's the word, ganache? Is that a word? You're going to have to start that whole ganache over. I can't believe it. The despair. Oh. Let's go to a commercial break on, see what Sonic and Dunkin' Donuts has to say. <laughs> would be a mess. Oh, we could pre-record some commercials. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> we have also advertised quite a number of brands of alcohol tonight on the screen. So thank you for that. But just yeah. like random quarantine activities yeah. as a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Twitch is also doing shots with you right now. So cheers to everyone, including Twitch. Cheers. Here, I'll do a liquor commercial. So we can go from the highbrow. 
<laughs> or we could have a little bit of Southern comfort. Oh, sure. Or this stuff is the bomb. It is a salty caramel whiskey. What? Yes. It's as good as it sounds. It is as good as it sounds. Twitch, Twitch has not asked me for this, although I know it's coming. They want me to you to take the cap off that bottle and take a swig. <laughs> I don't know. I just you got too, COVID. Donald. I just got COVID tested this morning, well, so it's probably it. not a good idea. Yeah, Mark's got no problems. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, what? <laughs> So yeah, Donald, like, I might have cut you off there. What were you saying? That, that salted caramel whiskey is the best thing. Yes. Oh, you oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> uh, taste. It's so good. We get it at, at, when we go down to Dollywood. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our next com commercial. Old Smoky Tennessee Whiskey. <laughs> it's so good. Located near Dollywood. <laughs> As my friends are taking shots with me on Snapchat. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! You've got a lot going on over there. You, I love how we're really kind of not connected, but we're connected through lots of different ways. Hello, <laughs> Snapchat. They, they might have been the ones suggesting shots. Oh, <laughs> Kate is also uh, on a permanent Zoom with her friends, basically. Yep. Last night we. Uh, Ordered terrible pizza, possibly engaged in some edibles, and watched cats on Zoom together. Funny we're hearing all those terms on Twitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't really been watching the clock, but now I'm going to say, Bakers, 12 minutes left. Yep, rattle some stuff. Deb, Deb Peachy, make it look like you're not, I mean... <clears throat> Move that dish. Yeah, there at least. Yep, good. You're still alive. I was just making sure you were breathing. Good. <laughs> so two weeks pizza, although two weeks from tonight is Cinco de Mayo. Ooh. Oh, is it really? What's the the pan de muerte? The Spanish, um, the like Dia de los Muertos bread. Margarita. <laughs> Mm. I feel like you could go on a baking Cinco de Mayo thing. Just like Mexican food. Oh, Tori made an appearance. Hi, Tori. Hi, Debbie. I was just going to say hi to you. Happy birthday. Oh, um, happy birthday to you, too. She met because your birthday was during quarantine. Yes, I, I know. I just felt like I should say it back. Her birthday's not for a while. It's fine. That's a okay. lot of energy there. I like it. <laughs> yeah. She's young and she's loading up on sugar. <laughs> so when she practiced this, I did the same thing last time. So she practiced it because I told her that she should have this tart. So she started making it and then there was like all this leftover ganache and jelly inside of the bowl. I was sounds like a terrible problem. It was terrible. It was, it was great. horrible. Okay, go away. Yeah, quite, quite the muse over there. It's good to have inspiration and help along the way. Support of our family. That, that almost felt like it was sort of a, a side story, kind of seeing your the upbringing to these bars and the turmoil you overcame when it wasn't tart enough originally. Ugh. Exactly. Brutal. I don't know. I kind of expected a little bit more drama from Donald and Michael. We haven't seen Michael in a while. <laughs> That's the drama. He's busy decorating. He's actually trying to make his look pretty, and I don't really care. Um, I just want mine to taste good. So mine are, mine are much easier. He's making his look very nice. I can I can see him from here what he's doing. Uh, and we're not. We're, we had separate. We, we did good. We didn't get into any arguments this time. Not yet. Now wait till the cleaning starts. That's different. <laughs> I saw that Mark just got a vote. Uh, I think uh, however much whiskey he put down won a lot of, uh, was really a fun moment for the, uh, the internet. I don't, I don't see Mark anymore, so I actually hope it was that much. It wasn't as much as it looked like. <laughs> not, not after we edit it. It'll, it'll work out just perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, bar people, Minnesota people, um, do I take the whole thing out of the tray or do I leave it in the tray and cut it like I would a brownie 
Yeah, it's a brownie. You just leave it? Leave it in there. Yeah, so you leave a little cook time for the middle because it's so hot, right? Like a brownie. Okay, well, we're done. <laughs> I love the collaboration. Oh, neat and handsome. You've got five minutes and 37 seconds to go. So who is done right now? Debbie Kay, who, and Donald. Debbie, you really have made us sweat. Like, this is happening. They won't be edible. I hope the house doesn't burn down. It, it, there's no telling what this thing tastes like. I did frost it with uh, butterscotch, melted butterscotch is my secret ingredient. You can oh. see it kind of swirled across the top. Oh, wow. Um, who, it could, it's heavy. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> It, 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 this thing probably weighs like 10 pounds. <laughs> Are we judging by weight then? <laughs> it, it's heavy. Red. <laughs> Debbie, much like our winter wear, we like everything to be very dense. Okay, well, <laughs> I might break a knife trying to cut it, but we'll see. That's the sign of a good bar. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> How are you doing, Peachy? You had simultaneous blind baking, uh, something and something else. It's got four minutes left. Mm. Okay, because you only have uh, eight minutes left? Seven minutes left, let's say. I'm at 6.45 now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sarah. Hola. Are you part of this? You invited me. I know, but have you been doing this the whole time? I, I just got, we just got our video figured out. I have, um, <laughs> I have my phone pointed at me, and we have a camera pointed at my workstation, but we're trying to figure that out. <laughs> so welcome, Sarah, who has been cooking in hiding for the last 52 minutes. I feel like that's a little shady, boss. <laughs> um, I also see a wrapper on the counter for that bar that bar bakery down the street. <laughs> Sarah, tell us what you've been baking so far. Well, I just started baking because I thought this started at 8 o'clock, but I was wrong. <laughs> oh, it was a time zone. <laughs> All right, so Mark is ready to try. Okay, let's wait till we end the... Wait, don't eat it. Oh, automatic disqualification for Jane. How unfortunate. I'm going to have to turn the <laughs> camera off. It's too delicious to wait. Sorry. You can secretly eat some, he, but you have to act like it's your first taste mark. Yeah, he just took a corner. I had the first disaster of the evening, so. Oh. But, you know, so Mark's eating, so I can feel like her. So, okay. so this is what happens when you frost a hot brownie. Hmm. It's and not pretty. They're pretty. <laughs> Sarah, I don't know if you can meet this timeline, but you do still have six minutes. Okay. <laughs> We're close. <laughs> I say whatever you're at at six minutes, you just taste it and act like it's delicious. I'm making um, cayenne pepper brownies. Oh, that sounds awesome. And I, ha I have a spicy Bloody Mary in honor of it. Yeah, <laughs> you're fitting in very well in tonight's episode. Good. I see that Nathan uh, is also on the phone or on the Zoom. He's trying, but it's okay. We have a newborn and things got out of hand. No. That's, what it, that's what hits all these reality shows. The Bachelor, the Bachelorette, the newborns get in the way. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Five minutes to go, bakers. I could have put it in the refrigerator, but it still wouldn't have gotten cool enough. <laughs> so if we do pizza next time, how, how do we wait for the dough to rise? If, we did hear on Twitch that pizza on Cinco de Mayo is sacrilege. Okay. They're a little indecisive, a little torn. Okay. Well, it doesn't have to be that day either. Although it could be fun. Could be margarita and baking. Could I was going to say, why don't we do drinks only? 
Well, I mean, just like people won't be able to drink. drink. Like mixology? Great yeah. quarantine drink off? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't have to drink the whole thing, but you could just make a drink. It won't take a lot of time. Yeah. Twitch also says, and I, I say Twitch like it's a person. <laughs> Twitch says, Frosted Hot, Br Frosted Hot Brownie is my stripper name. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was also product placement somehow. Yes, yes. <laughs> Dream girls, everybody, we're closed for quarantine, but as soon as we open it back up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they also like the mixology idea, the great quarantine mix-off. I mean, not that I'm any good at that, but... <laughs> Debbie's mom, I'm sure she liked it when I call her out, has suggested, how about empanadas? Love or, she wrote empanadas or empanadas. <laughs> she obviously likes empanadas. Yeah, I'd say the second one sounds pretty good. Yeah. I could make empanadas. Oh. I've never made empanadas. So Josie is showing off her bars, done and ready to go, I assume. Yeah, hey, thumbs up. I could make British food. That's what I'm best at. <laughs> What's British food? Sausage rolls. <laughs> could we do that on the 4th of July, or is that kind of rubbing it oh, in? Oh, that would be wonderful. Place? I'm hoping that maybe we'll be out of quarantine by July. That would be subversive. <laughs> Donald was showing his bars. Very impressive. The the presentation oh, cut you. very cleanly. Um, if you oh, could... see, that's where he's going to get me because I just tried to cut mine. It's too hot and it fell apart. Well, presentation doesn't matter much in a baking competition where we can only see the results and not taste them. <laughs> the presentation, the presentation is everything. Yeah, if we can't taste it, presentation is everything. <laughs> now, now when Twitch writes me, it actually says Twitch says, which I like, um, they'd like to learn to make many different multiple drinks. So I, we should maybe be a little careful because we might end up going down a path we really don't want to go down too deeply either. No, but I've got an idea. We'll discuss later. Okay. Uh, and then Twitch said shrimp wiggly. Does that mean something to someone? Oh, that, that would be from my daughter. <laughs> oh, of course. Is that what is that what she what you looked like that day? No, she came no that's the that's the food of our people. My mother used to make it during the depression. It's shrimp and gelatin. Ooh, yeah. Oh, one of those like 50, 1950s yes. jello mold yes. dinner things. Yes, my mother used to make it all the time. Yeah, that absolutely sounds like I gave you a secret ingredient that you had to throw into Jello. Yes. Debbie so Bay is showing her bar or barish thing. Yes. Pile. Yours is prettier than mine. Mine looks like um yeah. Oh. Well, I think it's just because it's too hot to cut still. Kate is also presenting hers, which looks like there's some graphic artistry involved. Uh, yeah, wow. let's say the great quarantine wow. good stuff. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Deb K's mom also said sopapillas. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're good. Sure. Sure. Um, okay, we're getting wow. down to the final. That's awesome. It's the final. Should we just say ten seconds? Is everyone kind of ten? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Look frantic. Two. Oh my goodness! One. Hands off, bakers. Hands off. Oh, unbelievably. Again on the baking show, we all made it just in the nick of time. Unbelievable. So let's go around the room and see what we've got. Um, who should I start with? Uh, why don't we go to the returning champion, uh, give her sort of champion's privilege, and Judy, please talk us through your, your what you baked. 
Um, so here they are in the pan. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> Almost nailed that mirror glaze, let me tell you. Um, and then it kind of like melted a little bit when I put it on the pan uh, plate, but there's your ganache, the whipped cream, and the jelly, and the shortbread, so fingers crossed, it tastes delicious. And I did, I made the jelly fresh right now. The question we all want to know also is how many beers did the two of you consume in the last hour? Just, I only have one. Oh. We're surprised. I know, but I did have a shot of gin, as instructed. Okay, that, yeah, that, that kind of makes up for it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the taste test. The taste test. Fingers crossed. I wanted to know if you want to take a mm -hmm. Okay, the champion no, says her no, no, no. own baked good is pretty delicious. Give me this. <laughs> it's no soggy bottom, it's delicious. It's perfect. <laughs> it's a good bake. A good bake. Got stolen from me. So okay, me. I'm going to try to repeat the order. Let's go to Josie from the from beginning. You're on mute. Okay, I'm good. All right. They look delicious. I feel like they need to set a little bit, but I'm going to cut a corner out. Oops. Oh, I forgot there's parchment paper under there. Okay. Oh, my computer's falling. One second. Okay. I just took the tiniest corner because I wanted to set a little bit out of the oven. Almost like you didn't have enough time. I had enough time. Oh my god. It's really hot and it's really good. <clears throat> There's a nice caramel layer on top of it. Milk chocolate chips inside the blondie. So good. So on the oh my god scale, it did get one. I got one. That was really good. You're okay. To smell that. <laughs> Wonderful. Action real hard. <laughs> Congratulations. I believe in the beginning next we went to Donald and Michael. Okay. I will show mine here. So these wow. look pretty darn good. You have to put they it in the really freezer good. to get that chocolate layer there. And then I whipped that peanut butter frosting on top. They're definitely oh, a crystal perfect as Michael's mom's, um, but they're pretty darn close. And they look, they actually, what do you think, Michael? I think they look great. They look exactly right. Wow, that's, that's pretty good. So I, I'm quite happy with these. Now, now I don't need to bug Michael's mom for them anymore. I can actually make them. Those look awesome. Yeah. I, I think they'll probably be available at Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow. <laughs> I love Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, thank goodness they're still open. And how about the taste? Oh, they're they're really good. They're a little bit moister than Michael's mom's are. So, oh, wow. Well, are you <laughs> sure, Donald, that this is where you want to go with this? <laughs> I think they're better. Oh, maybe we should rename the recipe after you. I am impressed. I I I will save one for her, and she says. I'm sure I'll get a nice passive aggressive Minnesota comment back, but yes. they're quite good. Happy. Okay. And I forgot to ask the Judy, the, I forgot to ask Judy and Josie, do you taste your secret ingredient? Yes. Yes. No, I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, George is trying it now, if you care. There's a secondary opinion. Oh <laughs> uh, not oh my god, good, but pretty good, she said. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Michael, how about you? Hey, here they are. We heard a lot about this decorating. This is a... Well, ooh. the Grandma Francie wouldn't have this peanut butter on top. That was the added ingredient. Oh, goodness. But um, there's the chocolate, chocolate um, vanilla layer, and then there's a frosting, and then the peanut butter. Should I taste one? You can see what I'm up against with <laughs> He is good at decorating. That was really beautiful. Really, really good. Well, 
Donald, we're d- Donald, word on the street is you're better than a better baker than Michael's mom. Like, are we yeah. supposed to be worried about you? <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> we have a lot of UK representation on this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, Narwhal, London. Well, that is an impressive first showing, Michael. Can you taste your secret ingredient? It's not peanut butter on top, so I assume so. Yeah, but the chocolate's really kind of overwhelming, I have to say. I like the honesty. That's probably going to win you points. <laughs> yeah, and to those of you on Twitch, you should start voting for who you want to win. Uh, thanks. Okay, let's move on to... Oh, I can't remember the order now. Did I go to Kate? I think... Jane was before me. Okay, Jane, sorry. Mark is going to taste mine. Because <laughs> he hasn't had it yet. This will be his first tasting. <laughs> Did he even know you were baking today? It's the first I've seen of this. Did you call him Mark? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Pretty convincing, Mark. He has that British reserve, you know? He's mm, speechless. Sure. <laughs> but, you know what? We're blaming a lot on Europe today. <laughs> the alcohol, the, 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 muted, the muted response. Okay, they're not quite done in the middle. <laughs> they're gorgeous. They're really, <laughs> really good. They're really gooey. That makes them better. <laughs> I'm going to put them in for a little bit longer. No. Okay. But it's Excellent. really good. But, the, um, but they're pretty. Okay, and between the taste buds that you didn't just Singe? Can you taste the secret ingredient? Yes, it, I crunched down on a walnut, so. Fair enough. Okay. I'm glad you only frosted a corner. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, let's go to Kate, I think. I put it in the fridge because it's hot. Mm, and I took a little corner out, but we have to take a tour. These are candied uh, lemon slices and candied rhubarb twists Ooh. and a little great quarantine bake-off lasered acrylic that thing. That is beautiful. That's awesome. <laughs> what a candied lemon looks like. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty. That is impressive. I mostly want to make things look good. <laughs> it tastes good. So I took a tiny corner out, even though this is also not set. <laughs> I'm into it. It's tart like rhubarb. You can tell, taste the lemon. You can taste the nutmeg. Um, and per all shortbread crusts, it definitely tastes like butter, which is what I'm going for in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, well, congratulations on a, a good bake, a good first bake. Let's go to Peaches. Peachy? Peachy. Peaches. Like, you and I have pet names now. Well, you look absolutely horrible. Good start. Good, good first <laughs> selling point. You, you played the game before. <laughs> I was going through my recipe box recently, and I came across this recipe, and I'm like, oh, my God, I have not made those in a million years. The last time you made them a million years ago, did they look like that? Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah, great. That's, how, that's how long it's been. Okay. I did make a different recipe last fall on aesthetics alone. That recipe would definitely be over this one, but let's taste. Tastes good. Very lemony. I'm getting the pecan, tiny bit of the blackberry. <laughs> okay. It tastes good. Okay, good. That's a real comeback story Sorry. from how you started. I love it. <laughs> Way to build some drama there. It was, it was very uh, rags to riches. I was on the edge of my seat. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I think we have one left, but before we go to our last one, let's go to Sarah. Sarah. Uh, did you take a bite of whatever you've got in front of you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, Kate's were um, hot. She had to put them in the fridge. Mine were unbaked, so I had to put them in the oven. <laughs> so, there they are. Okay. And um, what they are is uh, cayenne pepper ancho chili brownies. Wow. That's good. 
Ooh, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. It's, uh, it's kind of the reaction we're kind of hoping to see. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, sorry I got the time wrong. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to be really good, and I'll post a picture. Thank you for, for participating in one-tenth of the, of the great quarantine bake -off. And I cleaned the kitchen. I got a computer with a webcam and my phone so you could see everything, and I failed. <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to lose some sleep over that. And last, uh, to the conclusion of the quarantine, quarantine bake-off, Debbie Kay. So I made, here's Frankie. She's going to be my tester. I made a happy hour, so her Zoom can say hi to our Zoom. So, um, so I made a, um, I should just turn the camera around instead of trying to figure out how to do this. So um, it looks okay in the pan. You see the frosting of the butterscotch, which was my secret ingredient or my special ingredient. Still not quite ready to cut, but I did cut out a corner, which, um, where's the camera? <laughs> <laughs> which fell completely apart. But um, All right, guys, there is a fork this. there, but you see the fork is being ignored completely. All right. She's just digging right on in. She didn't break a tooth, so that's good. I like her peanut butter and chocolate. Huh? <laughs> peanut butter and chocolate. There you have it. Did you it's taste butter? Those are good descriptive adjectives. Uh, <laughs> did you like it? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, this is good. You have you have tied the record for the number of oh my gods. <laughs> it, it is um, gooey and sugary. And it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. You know, um, you should probably host the show next time. That yeah. was a good <laughs> It was, um, it would go really good with a glass of milk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been drinking bourbon, so I'm not sure the milk will go good with the bourbon. Um, you would be a great host, by the way. Everything you say, just more and more, I'm like, why aren't you doing this? Right, right. You're it probably going to win. Just by the way, you're probably going to win in your 45 <laughs> seconds on the camera. Okay, um, we have some votes. Uh, please send in your last vote so we know who you want to tally. And in that time, let's take a quick team photo. So if you could find a way to get your, your face and your bars into your camera, I'm going to take a screenshot. Still too hot. Still too hot. Here. Or just hold like a sponge, something that looks like a bar. <laughs> okay, do we have everyone? Do we have everyone? Almost, almost. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, got it. Thank you so much. Woo. Okay. Well, again, thank you to all the bakers. Thank you for helping sustain the economy with all those ingredients, even if you had to go to two stores. Um, Debbie K, thanks for putting this together. Donald, I know you've been a part of it um, a lot as well. I'm stalling a little. Here we go. And we are ready to announce our winner. I'll try to turn some music on again. And unbelievably, we have a tie for first place again. And that's not just because I feel bad picking one winner. <laughs> not like we're going to have two every week, but we might. So we <laughs> might have three or more. <laughs> but as a tie for this week's winner, winners, we have two. That's the tie. Uh, the first uh, tie person, gosh, man, they're flying in now. Um, one is, uh, I, think, I think they really want it with their international flair, uh, sort of bringing the world together, maybe sort of a, uh, maybe it was an anti-Brexit sort of thing, but our first, one of our winners is Jane. Uh, I do believe the heavy, heavy alcohol display and influence carried you to this victory uh, with our Twitch viewers. It always also, does. <laughs> sorry about that. It, yeah, Jane, what would you like to say as a, as a 
as now you have as many wins as anybody in the history of the quarantine bake off. I really don't drink that. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you have a you have a reputation and a brand to keep up now, so try to try to stick with that. Uh, also tying for first place today, uh, I believe, uh, coming out of the bat strong in costume uh, and using a laser uh, to finalize her piece was Kate. Sorry, <laughs> Kate, speech. Uh, tell your, your adoring fans. Uh, the laser is a cheap move, but it's fun to make stupid shit to uh, accompany things that you bake and or eat. Like, um, when you have a cheese tray, you can just label all the cheeses really professionally and whatnot. Um, and it's the way to cheat to make everything you make look awesome, and people make that uh, think that that means it is awesome. <laughs> but also, it tasted pretty good. <laughs> okay. Well, awesome. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, and this was our second Silly Show. Uh, brought to you by Sonic, Dunkin' Donuts, Old Tennessee Whiskey, and I would say lasers at the end there. Uh, <laughs> I you pretty good endorsement for them. Uh, I don't have anything else to say. That was awesome. Thank you. I'm sure I chatted too much. Uh, but who, does anyone else have anything else to close out? Oh, yeah, thank you, Pat. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> that was absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Twitch. Thank you, thank you Twitch. You guys were fantastic. Congrats, everyone. Have fun. Have a great evening. Um, thank you. It was nice to see everyone. I'm going to eat all these bars. <laughs>